What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Killer Cam Frank coming back at you another Madden 24 banger and today we're going to be going over the sister formation of what we went over in yesterday's video, Trio Offset Week. You guys are going to enjoy this a lot. We're going to go over some different concepts than what we went over yesterday. Uh, so definitely stay tuned. We have a lot more to come with the spread offensive playbook. I'm going to try to make these videos a little bit shorter and shorter as we go along. Uh, but for now, I'm going to give you guys as much information as I can. Let's hop right into it. All right, boys. So we are back in the spread offense playbook. Of course, and what we're going to be going over today is Trio Offset Week. In yesterday's video, we went over Trio Offset. Today, we're going to be going over Trio Offset Week. Very similar formations, obviously, with one catch. The running back is to the trip side of the formation in Trio Offset Week, and that is going to make more of a difference than you guys think. And the reason being is that with um, any kind of play, like any kind of flood concept, if your opponent is running match coverage... Um, this is going to get completely canceled out, make sure I got my other controller going, um, by the four receiving threats to one side of the field. So basically right here, you guys can see Metcalf, Hill, Moss, and CMC, and those are going to be considered four receiving threats to one side of the field. And that's going to essentially cancel match coverage. So um, I'm going to show you guys what this flood concept looks like right here against a match coverage look. This is cover for quarters. And basically what you guys are going to notice is that this um, safety right here, who is in an inside quarter, he is going to match onto that corner out if the running back is on the right side of the formation. And we only have three receiving threats to the one side. But right here, we have four. And I'm going to show you guys what happens. And we're easily able to throw that ball onto the sideline. Now, there was no match. So... We are all good, but if we were to motion our running back over, doesn't matter what route he's on, um, and we do the same kind of concept, literally exactly the same play, you guys are going to notice this safety right here, Paul Krause, he's going to match onto that corner route, and I'll show you guys exactly what that looks like right now, and you guys can see he matches onto the corner route and plays that to the sideline, kind of brackets it. So it's a little bit tougher to throw. Match coverage is a great job against corner routes. But again, um, when you guys have the running back to the left side of the formation with the trips, four receiving threats, match is not going to be activated. It doesn't matter what side of the field that route is going to. As long as he starts out on the opposite side of the quarterback on the trip side, you guys are good. So that is a key element to this offense. It's something that's super, super important. I wanted to go over that before we went over any of the run plays. Um, and there are some really good run plays in this formation, guys. We have an inside zone. We have a draw. I'm not going to go over those two because these are obviously things that um, we've gone over before. But the read option, the outside zone, those are really, really good run plays. And how I like to set up my audibles is just like this. Uh, middle slants, RPO read bubble, verticals, and flood. And you guys will see why here in just a second. Um, this outside zone is really, really good against man. Last time I told you guys why I think the buck sweep is so good against man coverage. And um, the reason being is that we are running away from the man coverage. Um, obviously, we're running away from those DBs on that left side. This time, we're doing the same thing, but we're doing this with an outside zone instead of a buck sweep because the running back starts on a different side of the formation. So... Um, what I recommend is IDing this outside guy, and as long as we can actually hit the edge right here, which we are not able to, we cut it back inside. We're still able to pick up a few yards, but um, this outside zone is meant to hit the edge. If we can actually not get a double team right there, and that tight end actually goes <laughs> with that outside blocker. If you guys need to, what you can do, if you really want to, is you can motion this tight end out and take that guy with him, and that way when you ID... Uh, like the linebacker for say we don't get a double team we're actually able to hit the second level right there now obviously that block got shed on the outside but it is something to note so that is the outside zone and I think it is very very good especially against man coverage so with this read option um, it's going to run a little bit different than the read option from the last formation and the reason being is that the uh, read key is going to be on the opposite side because the running back's on the opposite side, so we have to read it a little bit different. Now, right here, that is an obvious handoff to your running back scenario because that defensive end bit down on the uh, 
on the read key, and he would have played the quarterback if option defense was on aggressive and they played the running back. Obviously, you keep it with the quarterback, but that's not what happened right there. So this time, he goes for the running back, and we have a free lane to run with the quarterback, pick up some pretty big yards right there. So that is how the read option differs from formation to formation. Um, right there, obviously, you make the right read. You hold it with your running back. So read option, pretty, pretty good um, out of this formation. Against zone coverage, this read option is a little bit better. Um, against man coverage, the other read option was a little bit better because, again, the numbers advantage of the blockers on that left side compared to the right side with the other formation. So <clears throat> let's hop into our next run play, which is going to be actually an RPO. Uh, this RPO read bubble is great, 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 great against zone coverage. All right, so this RPO read bubble is going to play a little bit different than the um, RPO bubble out of the last formation. The reason being is that we have an extra threat on this play, and that is going to be the threat of keeping it with your quarterback. So basically, uh, you see a read key on that defensive end, and what that is going to do is basically if he pulls... Same thing as the regular read option, and we're going to hand it off to our running back, but if he bites down on the run, then we can either throw the bubble or keep it with our quarterback. So let's go ahead and run this one time. Right there, he stayed home. So obviously we take it with our running back, we pick up huge yardage. Um, now if he doesn't stay home, then we have the option to keep it with our quarterback, and we're gonna be able to pick up a few yards right there. It wasn't great. But this is a very, very effective read option, one of the best in the game. Plus, we had the third of the bubble. So this is a really, really nice play. I would definitely recommend using this over the actual read option um, because of that third of the bubble. And again, the bubble is going to be great, and we're going to be able to pick up huge yardage on this. People run this, whole, this RPO as their whole scheme because this RPO is so, so good, guys. This RPO is fantastic, even if that defensive end plays the run it doesn't really matter we still have a big lane with our running back inside zones are hard enough to stop the read and react ai does not work against rpos and we also have the threat to keep it with our quarterback or throw the bubble which makes this play even better and even if we do keep it with our quarterback we can still throw that bubble late now obviously we would have got an offensive lineman downfield sometimes that happens sometimes it doesn't but this play is just so good, guys. It's it's consistently, like, we're getting pancakes on the outside with our wide receivers. Against zone coverage, this play is crazy. And against man, you have an even better lane to keep it with your running back. And you guys see we're picking up a ton of yards consistently. So this is one of the reasons why this formation is so good. We also have another RPO out of this formation, uh, which is going to be pretty much the same thing as the last formation. This is going to be the RPO... Um, read smoke this time I'll show you guys against man coverage right here if we get enough congestion we're still going to be able to throw that little screen route to the outside I'm um, against zone it works a little bit better obviously because you have the numbers advantage but against man you have a better uh, lane to run with your running back now that time it didn't work out um, but if the quarterback keeper works then obviously we have a huge lane up the middle right there. So the quarterback keeper is a little bit better with this read. Obviously they're playing the quarterback every single time. I'm trying to get them to not play the quarterback because it's unbalanced right now. Um, as you guys can see, we have a huge lane to run with our quarterback. And if we didn't have Joe Montana, we maybe could take that to the house. So you guys see the combination of these two RPOs is super deadly. And if you guys can get this run to the outside like we did right there, you're going to be able to pick up consistent yardage. So I had to go over this before I go over the pass plays. Now let's hop into what you guys are really here for. All right, so first pass play I'm going to go over is fake screen wheel. And... Um, the fake screen element of this doesn't really matter too much, but what I really do like is the wheel route. I showed you guys what this wheel route did against man coverage last time, and same thing right here. Inside pass lead, we're going to be able to hit it for a one-play touchdown pretty much every single time. doesn't matter what DB is on them, uh, even though there's a little bit of a speed discrepancy right there. Um, prime time is 89 speed, and Tyreek has 90, but you guys can see inside pass lead. That actually, um, because of that smoke screen on the outside... Basically what happened right there is there was a little bumping and he played it a little bit different than he normally will. So 
what we're going to do to counter that is we're going to put a whip on this outside guy and hopefully they don't bump right there they didn't and we actually get that inside release like i said we're going to be able to throw that for a huge gain against man coverage now what you can also do with this play is i really like this streak from moss uh, in case that's zone you have the option to throw that in the seams i like to put my running or my tight end on a corner route and then you can actually um, have a Texas route from your running back going to the same side. I think that's a really unique play right there. So we're going to go ahead and run that. Corner route smokes. If you guys saw how much separation uh, Tyreek Hill had right there, that was an easy one-play touchdown. That will happen with off coverage a lot of the time in this play. Um, you guys saw there was some bumping. He gets caught up. And we have crazy separation. And just to show you guys a little bit of consistency, we're going to throw this wheel again. And inside release, we're going to be able to hit that for a touchdown pretty much every single time. So against a cover three or a cover four shell, it's going to be pretty much the same concept right here. What you want to do is you want to streak this outside receiver. And basically, this inside receiver right here is going to uh, pull any kind of like inside quarter or middle third in the middle of the field away from the outside enough to where you're going to be able to throw that wheel route on the sideline behind the streak. It's going to be a little bit of a tight window, but it's going to be a throw you can make pretty consistently. So I'll show you guys that right here. And like I said, tight window, but it is a very, very consistent throw. And this works wide side or short side. So this doesn't really matter what side you're on. We also have the threat of Randy Moss up the seams, which is really, really good against cover three. Now I do have a deep out zone KO right there. It didn't activate. Um, but we always have the seams that we can hit out of these trip sets, which makes even more of a threat. Um, trips tight end is so hard to guard this year, guys. It's one of the best formations in the game. And this is a really, really good variation of trips tight end with even better run plays and an insane RPO. So the next play we're going to go over is PA Flood. And uh, what I like about, again, about this play PA Flood is that this tight end post route does a really, really good job of getting separation against man. What I like to do here is um, either slant <clears throat> or drag this receiver right here in the middle. And then the rest of the play, you can keep how you want. Um, you can actually put this guy on a whip if you know it's man coverage. Uh, if it's press man, you can put him on a streak and try to get a release win. But this slant post combo between the uh, tight end and this inside slot receiver has been a staple in Madden for, against both man and zone for years. So let's, let's go ahead and see how it plays. And you guys see, like, right there, there was some, um, obviously, a little bit of a mix-up in that man coverage. And um, there was, like, some crazy bumping that went on. So let's go ahead and show you guys this again to give you guys more of a realistic scenario. Uh, right there, he actually played it super well. That's not something that normally happens. That post route is really, really good against man. So what I'm going to do, uh, just to ensure there's no bumping right here, is I'm going to spy this guy. And we'll just we'll keep him in a spy assignment. And you guys see, that's the separation that you normally get against man. And it's going to be consistent yardage. Um, and you can do this to the short side or the wide side. This is actually a tight end post that gets really, really deep down the field. And uh, when it does, you're in for a massive gain. If we can wait till it crosses that safety, and we're going to be able to throw it up top, that's pretty much a one play touchdown. Now, right there, Paul Krause, deep out zone KO. That's not normally going to get knocked out. Uh, but that tight end post is money, guys. We also could keep the little bubble screen right there. Um, they actually play really far off the bubble screens for whatever reason. But you guys can see, like, that post is just frying man coverage. And even with route tech, it, without route tech activated, I promise it does the same thing. This is just a really, really good post route. And the slant behind it makes it even better against zone coverage. Uh, same kind of thing right there. We got some bumping action going on. Tight end post is wide open. Uh, and then we had the corner route. Last but not least, we had the corner route against man. And there are just so many things out of this formation that smoke man coverage. Um, you guys are going to, <laughs> you guys are going to love this formation, guys. I, I promise you, once you start running it more and more, you're going to like it um, more and more every day because this formation is so, so good against both man and zone. Against zone, this is a great play. Against man, this is a great play. So let's go ahead and show you guys what it looks like against zone. Um, before I get too excited about it, but this this slant post combo is it's just so good y'all. It's so good um, I'll show you guys against the cover three 
because that is probably the most popular zone call right now. Um, and we still have the play action. You can keep the play action or you can cancel the play action. You can also wheel your running back. I'll show you guys what that looks like. And then, of course, we have the wheel to the running back. We have the tight end post or we have the slant over the middle. The user is going to have to choose between one of those. Uh, the running back wheel makes this play even more of a threat. And we also have the um, throw to Tyreek Hill on the sideline from that flood concept on that left sideline. So um, corner streak, obviously, uh, to any side of the field with the, with the trips formation is going to be deadly. But this against zone is just crazy good. Um, this post is going to get over the top to the point where we're going to find a soft spot in the zone. We're going to be able to throw that every single time. So this is one of the best plays in the whole game against both man and zone coverage. Like I, I genuinely, genuinely think that. Um, and if they try to play match, Obviously, match isn't going to work because we have four receiving threats to the one side of the field, uh, so their match is dead on arrival. This is a incredible formation, guys. There has to be so much adjusting done just to stop this one play. And when I show you guys some of this other stuff, you guys are going to fall in love. So let's talk about middle slant. We'll talk about it against man coverage first. Um, and honestly, this play is pretty good against man coverage. The tight end corner route doesn't get crazy separation, but it does get separation. Um, and then we have kind of a, a really nice quick snap combo uh, between that drag and that slant over the middle as well. What I like to do is out route my running back and then put a little comeback right here on that left side. That way we have even more options against man coverage. You guys know comeback routes destroy man coverage, but so do all these other routes. So this is a really, really deep corner route. Um, if you do get separation, you're going to be over the top and you're going to have a one play touchdown super, super easily as we did right there. Uh, but again, the rest of this play is really good against man too. Drags are awesome against man. Out routes are awesome against man. And slants, uh, since the patch, they don't quit running in the middle of the field the same way and they are really good against man. So right here we have the drag. We're going to be able to take the drag and we're going to be able to rack that upfield for a big gain. And something that we really haven't talked about too much um, at all in any of these ebook series are these curl flat combos and they're really really good guys so what i like to do is flat my running back right here and then we still have a nice little high low read over the middle um between that that slant and that drag you can also post your tight end and then we have another slant post combo with a drag underneath but what i really like is this curl flat combo between the running back and the outside receiver um, so what a lot of people will do with these combos is do it with the, you know, inside receiver and that outside receiver, uh, maybe even something like this. Uh, sorry, I meant to keep that curl right there. Um, but that, that curl flat combo in general is really, really good against both man and zone. Um, those curls are really, really good against man. And those flats are really, really good against zone. So basically, you are uh, putting that curl flat in conflict uh, to the point where he's going to have to play either the curl or the flat, and there's really no in-between uh, unless they have very, very specific double naval defense set up. And you guys can see that is an easy 10 yards. So that's going to work against pretty much any zone coverage, and that's definitely something to keep in mind. So speaking of curl flat, uh, let's go over the play curl flat. And against man, this is really good. And against zone, again, it's really good. So um, we have a really unique post route from this inside receiver. And it does a really good job of getting separation against man. And then, of course, we have the tight end corner route. does a really good job of getting separation against man. And then, of course, we have the curl, which also does a really good job of getting separation against man. Now, against man coverage, what I would recommend doing is whipping this receiver right here. Uh, that way you have an extra threat against man coverage but you guys see even like right there the universal coverage activated and that's why he didn't get crazy separation on that but usually in game i promise they do uh so what you can also do is put your tight end on a normal corner route if you don't want him on that specific corner route but um that that post route from that inside slot receiver kind of works as a crossing route and you guys will see exactly what i mean again zone coverage uh, but it's a really, really good route, guys. It's something you guys definitely want to be using. With your running back, you can do whatever you want. 
Um, you can put him on an out route. You can block him. Really, you can do whatever you want with him. Uh, this post route's money, though, guys. It really is. As soon as you get the timing down, if there's not a universal coverage on you, you guys are going to be able to throw that consistently. Now, as far as the rest of the play goes, um, we're going to look whip and then curl route. Uh, curl route is obviously a timing route, so against man coverage, you're going to have to throw it on the break for you, you to be able to hit it consistently. Right there, that was just a really bad pass lead, but you guys know what I mean. I'm sure you guys have thrown curls against man coverage this year. They're actually super underrated. Uh, one other thing we can do is we can drag this receiver. All right, boys, so we're back to good old four verticals. And um, you guys saw in the last video, this is a very, very similar. It's like pretty much the same play, except with trio offset weak, the running backs on the left side. With trio offset, the running backs on the right side. Um, I can show you guys if I audible two trio offset verticals. Literally nobody moves. Um, so if we audible back to trio offset weak verticals, the running back motion's over, and that is it. Even the alignment with the receivers, uh, whether they're playing off or on the line of scrimmage, is exactly the same. So nothing about this is different um, except for where the running back is standing. So you guys are going to realize that, again, um, it just smokes man coverage. It just does. <laughs> that uh, crossing route is really, really good against man. And um, you can apply pretty much all the same concepts that we went over in yesterday's video to this video. Um, as far as man coverage and four verticals go. Now, um, if you guys didn't check out my tip video last night, I definitely recommend you do so. As far as the cover four beater I went over, because it is really, really unique. It's something I haven't seen anybody else use, and it's really, really good. Uh, but I just want to briefly recap what we went over yesterday, in case you guys didn't watch yesterday's video, um, about trio offset. But four verticals against zone coverage is really good. It's always going to be. And um, after that chuck against cover three, you're going to be able to throw that consistently. Against cover four, you're not going to get that zone chuck. And you're going to be able to throw that seam pretty much anyways. And then, again, we still have the, the same kind of thing with um, the running back and the, the, the crossing route right here. There's a soft spot. You can throw that crossing route even against cover four in the seam if they don't use it these crossing routes are really really good uh so like right there we're able to complete that it got knocked out because of the universal coverage but 10 times out of 10 in the game that's a completion so we also have the out routes from the tight end and uh right there basically what happened was <clears throat> that outside quarter on that right side like came and played it kind of crazy which is something that you're not going to see very often uh but if they're going to play that like that Oh, it's actually a curl flat, sorry. I, I thought I was facing the cover four, but that curl flat played that really well. Um, you can flat your tight end if you want to reverse this and drag your tight end and out route your running back. There's a lot you can do here, guys. Uh, this out route from the running back is also really good against man coverage. It also finds a great soft spot in zone uh, because it's a stock out route and not a um, hot routed out route. Um, it... it does find a little bit better soft spot it kind of breaks a little bit better too against man coverage so these are all definitely things that you, sh you should take in mind when you're running this formation but between um the the coverage beaters and the really nice crossers slash post routes and um some of the you know match beating and zone beating concepts that we went over as well as the stuff that beats man coverage like the wheel route from the slot and the um, really nice four verticals route. There's a lot you guys can take out of this formation. Um, last thing I do want to go over, and this is kind of a hot route master setup. Uh, not really hot route master, but a slot apprentice setup. I don't want to go over all the same things that I went over in the last um, episode of this ebook series because obviously you don't want to see the same things over and over again, so I'm not going to do that. But I do want to give you a little bit of a different setup for zone coverage. Um, and I really like this setup right here. This is something I've been using for years against zone. And basically what we're doing right here is we are um, flooding that right sideline with a in route from the running back that is going to um, attack the shallow sideline, the crossing route from Randy Moss, which is gonna get deep down the sideline and um, attack 
very far vertically and then of course we have the flat route to pull any kind of crow flat zones and then the smart route and in route to uh, hit the line of scrimmage and give us a nice little check down for a first down so this is something that is um, you don't need hot route master the reason I said that is because what a lot of people will do is put a crosser right here instead and do it like this this is a very very popular route combo that people have been using for years in Madden it's something I definitely wanted to mention because it's really really good this is a very popular pro setup uh, so this crossing route is gonna get to the sideline pretty quick and uh, if you guys don't want to use the um, Hot Route Master or Slot Apprentice crossing route, you can keep that same crossing route that you have out of four verticals, uh, which is why I'm mentioning it right now, because it's going to get upfield a little bit farther and give you a little bit of a deeper throw, so zone drops won't be able to guard it. And right there, uh, you guys can see that is the case. So. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure you slam that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you're notified for every time we put a video out, just like these. If you guys didn't check out my last video and trio offset, I definitely recommend you do so because you can apply a lot of those concepts to this video, uh, along with some really unique concepts that we went over in today's video, and some crazy RPOs that really are just game breaking, and you can build a whole scheme around just those. As always, it's your boy Killer Camp, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.